Back to our top story this morning. U.S. source telling us that Israel carrying out a retaliatory strike against Iran overnight. Now, we still have not heard from Tel Aviv or received an official statement from the White House, but we could hear from Secretary of State Antony Blinken any moment now as he prepares to step up to that podium in Italy. Mark Toth is a national security and foreign policy expert. Colonel Jonathan Sweep served 30 years as a military intel officer. And both gentlemen join me now. Mark, is this a one and done by Israel or is this setting the stage for further action? Uh, good morning, Todd. It appears to be a one and done right now, but as uh, your previous guest was saying, Dan Hoffman, I uh, highly suspect that there's something more to come, and, and we'll be finding that out in the day or the days ahead. Um, I think what we're seeing, though, at a higher altitude is that this is a perfect storm that's been in the making for a long time, beginning in Afghanistan uh, with the permissive environment that President Biden started to create by his uh, chaotic and, and, frankly, premature withdrawal from it, uh, to now what we're seeing, his fear of escalation uh, and not wanting to uh, see things escalate, be it in Ukraine or the Middle East, is actually leading to the escalation uh, that he so fears. In Ukraine, uh, we saw that again on October 7th and just then again this last Saturday. So from that standpoint, it may be one and done for right now from Israel's standpoint, but the Mideast is in a very dangerous position at this point, largely because President Biden has created this. And I would add one last point here. That one of the things that we need to be looking at is connecting the dots. This isn't happening in a vacuum. It's, it's happening because China, Russia, North Korea, as well as Iran are acting as an axis of evil. And that's all coming together uh, to put the Middle East in this dangerous situation that we're in. They're operating together, and it's, it's time for the U.S. to start pushing back and saying, hey, we're going to lean into winning now. No more of this defending into perpetuity. Well, earlier in the week, Joe Biden told Israel, told Benjamin Netanyahu, take the win, don't do anything. Obviously, Benjamin Netanyahu ignoring that. But now, Jonathan, I want to draw your attention to a brand new report we literally got seconds ago out of the Wall Street Journal saying that Joe Biden is now weighing more than $1 billion, $1 billion in new arms for Israel, the largest transfer to that country since October 7th, 2023. What's your reaction to that, Jonathan? Well, my reaction is, is about time. And it's also, uh, it's about time that, uh, that the folks in Congress pass the supplemental funding bill for, for All uh, right. I understand his shots frozen there. Mark, can you pick up on that question? What do you make of this new uh, one billion dollars in new arms for Israel that I asked Colonel Jonathan about? Uh, you know, it, it's needed for sure. It's, it's late in coming. Uh, you know, Israel's uh, fighting a war on multiple fronts right now, and, and they're fighting a war that has to be won in the Gaza Strip. The U.S. has been doing its best, I should say Biden has been doing his best, to, to tamp down on that, uh, leaving Hamas intact, which is crazy, because the Gaza Strip, one way or the other, is going to have to be rebuilt, and you don't want Hamas sticking around to be the ones to do it, or we're just going to be looking at a rinse-and-repeat situation. So from this standpoint, Israel needs the money, the weapons, and the capabilities to put an end to Hamas, as well as to be able to deter, if not destroy, if necessary, uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon and take on Iran as needed, especially as their nuclear program and their nuclear breakout in terms of their ability to produce bombs, which they may already be there, uh, draws nearer. So there's a lot of things going on now, and a billion dollars, frankly, may just not be enough. There's a big potential war happening in the Mideast that we as a country have to be leaning into to make sure that we win it. Jonathan, I believe we have your shot back. I want to lean on your time as a military intel officer. What do you expect to see on the streets of Iran today? Well, I think what we're going to see on the streets of Iran today is just messaging. Uh, the Iranian government is going to say that they defeated an Israeli attack, and they're going to be pushing their citizens to get out in a protest and to say that, that they're winning. So that, that's what we're going to see. But in reality, it was a message and a strong message that was sent. And, uh, and Iran gets it, at least the, the leadership gets it. But they're going to try to, uh, they're going to, try to push that away and uh, say that there was a victory. Um, but 
clearly, if you can touch the Iranian nuclear sites at will, like Israel demonstrated last night, apparently that it can. I do not think that's cause for celebration if you're the mullahs there in Iran. Could be cause, though, for celebration for the Iranian people if this could ultimately lead to the ouster of those mullahs. Mark Toth, Colonel Jonathan Sweet, thank you for your insight. We appreciate it.